to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. Daniel said to the evil king of his day, the Most High rules in the kingdoms of men. Daniel chapter 4, verse number 25. We welcome you today to our study of the small but powerful prophet and his book, Daniel. Daniel was a great man of God whom God worked through to show his power and his glory both to the nations and the people of Israel. And we're so glad that you joined us for our study of this amazing book. If you don't have your Bible, we want you to take just a moment, find your own copy of the Bible if you've got one, have it open to the book of Daniel as we're going to study God's word together. Friend, we're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast today. We want you to know that today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and members of the Churches of Christ. The Lord's Church in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly, whether it be at Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday for Bible study. You would be an honored guest at any of their assemblies. You'll find people there who are kind and warm, who love God, and who want to help men and women go to heaven. If you'd like to have a further study in the Bible on any subject, whether that be the plan of salvation, whether you've got a Bible question, whatever it may be, you'll find people in the Lord's church who'd be happy to sit down, open up the Word of God, and simply let God's voice be heard on the matter. And so we, again, we want to encourage you to stop by the Lord's Church, the Church of Christ in your local area, and visit with them. Also, we'd love to help you hear the gospel of Christ and your desire to know God and His will better. Check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our material online. It's available free of charge. We have books, uh, lessons on every book of the Old and New Testament, over 500 lessons, a wide variety of, of topical lessons as well, transcripts, written material, a great plethora of good Bible study material can be accessed from thegospelofchrist.com. If you'd like to have a copy of this study on the prophets or any of our past lessons, just fill out a free media request form. If you need a copy in DVD or CD, we'll mail that to you free of charge, or you can receive a digital download, download instantly as well. And it's a great way to study God's Word and learn more about His will. Friend, we encourage you also to check out the App Store, the respective app stores for the Gospel of Christ app. Great way to keep up with what we're doing, new lessons we've put out, and to stay in touch with uh, our studies as we go in our fast-paced world that we all live in today. Let's now turn our attention to a study of the wonderful prophet Daniel. The key idea to the book of Daniel is that God still rules in the kingdoms of men. This is mentioned in Daniel 4.25, in Daniel chapter 5, verse 21, and later, toward the close of the New Testament, Revelation 11, 14, and 15, the kingdom of our Lord, it's taken over and it's ruling all other kingdoms. God's kingdom, God's reign, Him on the throne over all nations. God will always be the ultimate king and ruler and all things fall at His feet to His sovereign will and desire. And until I realize God's in charge, and until I accept He's the one whom we must honor and glorify, friend, I'm not going to live the best life that I could ever live. Of course, another key to understand the book of Daniel is concerning some of its prophecies. There are prophecies in Daniel that relate to things that are in the future. For example, Daniel prophesies about a kingdom that is coming that will outlast, outrule, and be God's eternal kingdom. Now think about this. During the time of Israel, 
which currently is God's kingdom. Daniel prophesies that there's another kingdom coming that will be set up in the time period following these four earthly kingdoms. What is that kingdom? Stay tuned and we'll discuss that just a little later. And so the key idea is rules. God rules in the kingdoms of men. But what about Daniel himself? Daniel was such a great man, such a great servant of the Almighty God. Daniel's name means God is my judge. And Daniel didn't care what other people thought. He didn't care what might or might not happen to him. Daniel knew ultimately God would be his judge. And if he lived faithful to the Lord, he would be justified. Now, Daniel, like many in Israel, was taken captive during the time frame of the writing of the book. Daniel was taken captive in 606, and he wrote this book from Babylon in captivity. And what stands out about Daniel is he faced a lot of hardship. He faced a lot of difficulty. But like Joseph in the Old Testament in the book of Genesis, Daniel stayed true to God. And in the long run, God blessed Daniel and those who followed his message immensely. And so let's take a few moments today. Let's see what practical lessons that I can learn from the book of Daniel that'll help me to be faithful, more faithful to God, a better Christian, and to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus. Here's the first lesson. Daniel is a great man of God because he was a man of purpose. Open your Bible to Daniel chapter 1, verse number 8. As Daniel's been taken captive, the Bible says, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. There were things that they were asking Daniel to do that weren't right. Daniel was asked maybe to eat things that weren't according to the law of God or to drink things like wine that Daniel shouldn't have drank. And so Daniel, he stood up for his, his convictions. He, he purposed in his heart. What's that mean? Daniel made up his mind. That's wrong. God doesn't want me to do that. I'm going to not do that. And when Daniel purposed his heart, he set his life in action to follow that out. Daniel made a commitment to God, and he did his best to live that commitment every day. Friend, when you obey the gospel, when a person decides to follow Jesus, aren't we making that same commitment? Jesus said, if any man desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. When I decide to become a Christian, I am purposing in my heart to follow God. I am making a commitment to the best of my ability. I'm going to be faithful to the Lord. I'm no longer going to do things that people of the world do. I'm no longer going to talk the way people of the world talk. I'm no longer going to be involved in immoral things that drunkenness and debauchery and immorality like people of the world. I don't do it so that people can say, oh, look at him. That's not the idea. We do it because that's what God wants us to do. And it brings God the glory and the honor in every way. What made Daniel a great servant? Daniel made up his mind a long time before he faced any of this persecution. Whatever God wants me to do, at whatever cost there may be to me, I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. And friend, wouldn't it do each one of us a great deal of service today if we made that same purpose in our heart? to know God's will, and to make a commitment, no matter how difficult or how challenging that may be, I'm going to do my best to live according to the Bible. No wonder the lions were afraid of Daniel a little later. He'd already decided to follow God, and God was indeed on his side. Then I want you to look at another practical lesson. We mentioned it in our introductory matters. Daniel makes a great prophecy about a kingdom 
that is going to be coming in the future, and we can know when that kingdom was, and we can know what that kingdom was. Look in your Bible in Daniel chapter 2. And so there is this dream that Nebuchadnezzar has, and Daniel begins to interpret this dream. And in the dream, Dan, uh, Nebuchadnezzar sees this image of gold and iron and clay and silver and, and all of that. And Daniel's going to tell what that is and what the dream means. Look in Daniel chapter 2. I especially want you to see verse number 44. And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. And so Nebuchadnezzar sees this dream. There are four kingdoms and they're divided uniquely in the figure of this man to, by four different metals. And Daniel says, here's what all these things are. There's four kingdoms coming. Of course, you've got the Babylonians, you've got the Medes and the Purge, Persians, you've got the Greeks, and you've got the Romans who historically are those four kingdoms from this point forward. And so Daniel says, in the days of these kings, in the days of the, either the Babylonians, the Medo-Persians, the Greeks, or the Roman Empire, God is going to establish a kingdom which will crush all other kingdoms and which will never be destroyed. Well, who's, what is God's kingdom during the Babylonian era? God's still reigning through Israel. Israel is still the kingdom during the reign of the Medes and the Purge. It's still the kingdom during the Greek Empire. But then that Roman Empire comes, that fourth kingdom. And during that kingdom, Jesus says in Mark 9, verse 1, Assuredly, I say to you, there are some standing here today who will not taste death until they see the kingdom present with power. Jesus promised there's a kingdom coming. Jesus said, I'll build my church and I'll give to you the keys of the kingdom to Peter. Matthew 16, verse 18 and 19. And on the day of Pentecost, during the Roman Empire, that fourth kingdom, God, for the very first time, established his church and Peter preached it as a present reality. And so, friend, God, God's church, his kingdom is the eternal kingdom. That will, what happened to the Babylonians, Medes, Persians, Greeks, and the Roman Empire have gone into historical books. What about the Lord's church today? Still vibrant, still living, still the most important kingdom in all the world that Revelation says will outlast and outlive all other kingdoms. And so we have this great prophecy about the Lord's church. And friend, if it's going to be the kingdom, that outlast all other kingdoms? If Jesus is one day coming to receive that kingdom to the Father, there is definitely a definite need, a definite urgency to be a part of the Lord's church, the church that Jesus died for. Acts 20, verse 28. The church he promised to build. I'll build my church. And the church that when people in the book of Acts heard the word, believed in Jesus, repented of their sin, and were baptized, God added them to that. Acts chapter 2, verse number 47. A third practical lesson from the book of Daniel is that if God puts you in something, if God puts you in a situation, if something happens in your life, God's going to give us the ability to deal with that and to overcome that through the example of Jesus, through his word, and through his help. Let me illustrate. Open your Bible to Daniel chapter 3. And so we, here we have three friends of Daniel's, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Everybody is told at the sound of the uh, Psalter and the decree that goes forth, we're going to bow down and we're going to worship this image. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, eh, thanks, but no thanks. We're not doing that. We serve the true and living God. We're not going to worship this image. That's not what we're going to do. And so as a result of that, the king has them taken and they are now going to be thrown into the burning, fiery furnace. That furnace is so hot that the men who fired it up, it actually burns some of them. We're talking about a massive temperature that we can't imagine. How are these men going to deal with that? Look in Daniel 3, verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If it is the case, our God whom we serve is able 
to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you've set up. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, such great heroes of the faith because they said we are not going to worship your false god we, we are not going to bow down before you as the king. We don't need to answer to you because we answer to the almighty king. And they said, you throw us in the fiery furnace. Here's what will happen. Our God, my, our God is able. He's able. If it's his will, he's able to deliver us from that furnace. But if he doesn't, that's okay too. Because we serve the true and living God and we'll never bow down to you. And friend, you remember the story. Through Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into that burning, burning fiery furnace. The king looks in, and inside there, still alive, untouched, unburned, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and one more person, one like the Son of Man in there taking care of them. Friend, God put them in that. God was able, just like they said, to deliver them. What about our life today? When challenged to do things that are not right, when tempted to give in to things that God doesn't want us to. Let's remember, God's able to deliver us from those things, and if he doesn't, he's still God, I'm still his child, and regardless of what happens, I'm going to serve him and glorify him. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to men, but God, who is faithful, with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Whatever I face in life, if God puts me in it, he's going to deliver me. He's going to take care of me. And if he doesn't, he's still God. I'm still his child. Ultimately, heaven will be our home and it'll all work out in the long run. A fourth lesson from the book of Daniel. That King Nebuchadnezzar, who thought he was basically a god during that day, He's ultimately humbled by God. Look in Daniel chapter 4, and I want you to notice what the Bible says in verse 37. God says, Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor after he'd seen all God works. I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all of whose works are truth and his ways justice. And watch this. And those who walk in pride, he's able to put down. Nebuchadnezzar is humbled because God brings him down. He basically becomes a recluse. He's out in the field eating grass like the cattle, basically. And he's starting to lose his mind, as it were. And, and God is still God. Nebuchadnezzar may have kind of went crazy, but God didn't. Nebuchadnezzar eventually comes back to himself. And he says, he's able to humble those who are prideful and those who are put up. And so God shows Nebuchadnezzar who's boss and who's in control. Then flip over, if you would, in Daniel chapter 5. Daniel, who's also known as Belshazzar, is now at a feast. You've got all the astrologers, all the Chaldeans, all the soothsayers gathered there. And an amazing thing happens. There is this finger. That, uh, this hand that appears and the finger begins to write on the wall and it is a message for the people of that day. And look what that message is in Daniel chapter 5, beginning in verse 25. And this is the inscription that was written. Mene, mene, tickle you farsen. This is the interpretation of each word. God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. You've been weighed in the balances and found wanting. Your kingdom's been divided, given to the Medes and the Persians. Then Belshazzar gave the command. They clothed Daniel with purple, put a chain of gold around his neck, made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. Can you imagine being in that scene and this hand starts writing this message? You've been weighed in the balances and found wanting. Your kingdom's divided and given to another. This was not a, a happy message for the people of that day. But to see an amazing event like that, Daniel responded properly and he told what God said and how people needed to live their life to be right with him. Now, when I think of Daniel, and when most people remember the prophet Daniel, Daniel is remembered as a, a great man of prayer whose convictions could not be compromised 
even at the face of the mouth of the lion. Look in Daniel chapter 6 with me. A decree has now been made that the people have set up for King Darius, the ruler of the Medes and the Persians. They've set up this image. There's going to be the sounding of the bell. Uh, when the bell is heard, everybody has to bow down and worship, fall down before this image. And Daniel, according to Daniel 6, verse 10, says this. Now, when Daniel knew the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. It's not like Daniel didn't know what had happened. He knew a decree had been signed. He knew the writing of the Medes and Persians, once it was signed, you could never be gone back on. Daniel knew when he opened up his window that day, as he had since he was a child, and he prayed toward Jerusalem, Daniel knew there would be consequences for doing that. But Daniel also knew the Most High is the one who still rules in the kingdoms of men. He's the one I'll answer to. These people today may have their decrees. They may can do harm to me, but ultimately I'm a child of God, and he'll take care of me. And watch what God did to Daniel. Daniel chapter 6, look in verse 18. Now the king went to his palace. This is after Daniel has been brought and put in the lion's den. Now the king went to his palace, spent the night fasting. No musicians were brought before him. Also his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning, went in haste to the den of lions. When he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you can serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lion's dens? Now, don't you know the king was shocked when he heard this? Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth so that they've not hurt me. Because I was found innocent before him, and also, O king, I've done nothing wrong before you. Isn't that a, a powerful example of how God, Daniel did what was right. It was a difficult choice to make. And Daniel did it anyway. And Daniel knew God would take care of him. Can you imagine doing that? A, lie, a den full of hungry lions. All you've got to do is just bow down before this image. Don't pr Just skip praying to God one time. You don't have to mean it. Just bow down to this image. You don't even have to mean anything by that. Daniel said, nope, can't do it. Opened his window right there where everybody could see. Prayed to God as he always had. People caught him doing it. King didn't want to throw him in the lion's den, but he had to. King was sad about it. They opened the vault on that den. There's Daniel, happy, healthy, well, and still honoring God. Friend, regardless of what happens, regardless of what changes may come in our life, in our country, in the world, regardless of how difficult it may be to be a Christian, Remember, God's still on the throne. He's still ruling in the kingdoms of men. His will is above all else. And like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whether we are delivered or whether we die for the cause of Christ, God's going to get the glory by the way we live our life and by the way we strive to point others to Jesus Christ. Then let's consider this. In the book of Daniel, Daniel also reminds us of a powerful lesson by his penitent prayer for the people in Daniel 9, verse 4. Look in Daniel chapter 9. As Daniel thinks about his people, many of whom have not lived as they should have, watch what Daniel does in Daniel 9, beginning in verse 3. Daniel says, Then I set my face toward the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. And I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession and said, O Lord, great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant and mercy with those who love him and with those who keep his commandments. We've sinned. We have committed iniquity. We've done wickedly and rebelled, even by departing from your precepts and your judgments. Neither have we heeded your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings and our princes, to our fathers and all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongs to you, but to us. 
shame of face as it is this day. The men of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel, those near and those afar off and all countries which you have driven them because of the unfaithfulness which they have committed against you. O Lord, to us belongs shame of face, to our kings, our princes, our fathers, because we have sinned against you. And of course, Daniel, in this context, he goes on to plead with God, to pray for the people, to, to seek God's will, and to ask God to help them and be merciful to them and help them to get back where they needed to be. Friend, as you hear the prayer of Daniel, and as you hear him pray for the leaders of that day, for those in places of authority, high places, for all the people and for himself. Can't we all relate to Daniel's prayer? Have we really as a people, as a church of God, have we really lived as God wants us to? Have our hearts been true to the word of God and his will to the point that no matter what happens, we're going to live right to God and give him the honor. Has our purpose of heart been so strong that we'll never defile ourselves with the ungodly things of this world? Do we really understand that although men may be set up in political positions of power and nations may carry a certain amount of authority today, that God's still on the throne? that he still rules over the kingdoms of men, that my allegiance first and foremost is to Almighty God and his kingdom today, and that that kingdom, that church, those people in that church, that's what it's all about. God's eternal kingdom, seeking and saving the lost, that which is ultimately going to go home and live with him, it is the single most important kingdom of the whole world. And as nations relate to and respond to God's church and the gospel, friend, God knows and God deals with them accordingly. And so may we as a people of God today have the faith and the courage of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, stand up for what's right, even in the face of adversity, do what God wants us to do no matter what, and then we can know it truly will be well with our soul. Friend, if you've never obeyed the gospel, we'd love to talk to you more about that, and we hope that you'll contact us and study more with us as we're going to study the Word of God together next time. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.